Hi there, Electron Man here. Um, thought I'd do a little video today about doing battery connectors. Um, I got a new uh, Carbon Z Cub for Christmas, and as usual, it doesn't have the uh, battery connectors I have. I started the project already. I went ahead and uh, I've changed, as you can see, I've changed the end over to a Dean's connector on the electronic speed control. Haven't mounted the motor yet. I'm just in the start in the building. and thought this is a good time to pull the uh, ESC out and go ahead and put the Dean's connector on it. I wish they had a standard, but you know, it seems like every manufacturer wants to, to shove their, their connectors on you, probably because then you buy their batteries. You know, I, I'm a Hobby King battery buyer. Um, I get the highest C rating that I can get for the best buck. So, you know, it, it varies from battery to battery and from, from dealer to dealer, but I never end up with the connector that I want. It either has no connector or it'll have some, you know, third party I can't remember all the different names of them but anyway I thought I'd do a short video on how I uh, install my uh, connector of choice which is a Dean's connector uh, I've been using them since back in the RC car days um, they're rated at 100 amps uh, I've never had any problems with them um, they're pretty easy to install so they're, they're just they're my connector of choice that and I don't know probably a year or two ago I bought I bought a bag of 200 so <laughs> kind of I'm kind of committed to them uh, I, I think I gave like 40 bucks on eBay for those and uh, and needless to say I, I've got like 12 different RC planes and six helicopters but everything I get I, I put a Dean's connector on so I just thought I'd do a short video on how I install a Dean's connector on a, on a new battery maybe I need to start with some uh, some tools you're gonna need um, obviously you're gonna need a solder and iron uh, this is a 3700 milliamp 6S pack, so wires are pretty beefy on it. Um, you're going to need a good hot soldering iron. Hopefully my soldering station has got enough heat. If not, I've got a, a big iron too, like a 125 watt iron. But uh, we'll, we'll try it with my soldering station first. Uh, we'll, we'll sh I'll show you how to make sure it flowed and got a good uh, good soldering joint. Uh, you're going to need a, I got clamps on a mount so that you can hold things while you solder them. Um, you're also going to need, obviously, your connectors. Now, what I always do is, uh, of course, the, the battery side should be the side that doesn't have the, uh, I've got one right here. The battery side will be this one, which will be the one that doesn't have connectors sticking out because, obviously, you wouldn't want to store batteries with the open connectors. So you always want to use the closed connector side. Like I said, these are Dean's connectors. Now, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and put a, the male part of the connector on uh, it does a couple of things one it helps distribute the heat uh, makes it easier to hold and uh, it keeps it for if you get it too hot that the that the settings don't float on you to where it doesn't plug in right so I always connect it to to a male in this case since I'm hooking a, a female up to the battery and then uh, then we'll go to the soldering part of this of course first I'm gonna wanna cut this connector off um, which what I'll do is I'll cut it right at the connector. I don't use these connectors So I'm not trying to save it or anything. So obviously I want as much wire as I can get so I'll cut them right right flush there At the ends some of the connectors um, you have to cut it back a little bit because they're uh, part of the connectors underneath outside the installation But either way you just want to cut, cut your connector off here Okay, now that I've got my connector cut off which you can see here's the old connector you can see I just cut it Oops, get it in camera. Cut it flush, and uh, here I end up with my two wires. Now, well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'll only strip it back about about an eighth of an inch, and uh, and I only strip one of them because obviously you know I've got a 6s here, and I don't want the, the two to touch each other. Uh, it could cause a fire and definitely a, a major short on the battery. So, uh, well, I'll start with the the negative, and then I'll go to the positive. But I'll go ahead and trim that back, and then I'll uh, I'll prep the connector. I'll be back in a second. Okay, now I have the wire stripped back, as you can see, um, I just stripped it, it's about an eighth of an inch, I'd say, and then I've got my connector mounted on the, uh, on my little, uh, extra hand stand, I'll call it, and then the next thing I want to do is I want to, uh, tin the wire, let me see if I can get this camera set up to where you can watch me, uh, uh tin, tin the connections, and then, uh, go ahead and, and do the, the solder of the connection. Okay, now the first thing I'm going to do is, uh, is I'm going to tin both my uh, my negative wire here and my connector that I've got in my multi-tool. Um, 
what you want to do here is let me get some solder because we want to make sure our our the tin our tip on our solder iron which that's why this is knocked off that and make sure you got her tinned okay now then the first thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and and they call it tinning which is basically prepping uh, the connection for uh, soldering um, there's a there's a uh, flux inside this solder and some of them you can use an external but this has got an internal flux in it so when I when I heat up the solder and the flux it will cause it to to adhere to the to metal you're, you're soldering to so as you can see here I'll just tin this up see, and I got a nice tin on that hopefully you can see that and then I'll do the same to the wire I don't know if I can or not Okay, now I've got the uh, the wire tinned up too. Sorry, it's kind of hard to. It's definitely a it's a three hand job. That's why I have the hand here as well. So I have to hold the solder in one hand and the wire in the other. So, but uh, there's my tinning of the wire, which basically same thing. Uh, and also, when you're soldering, you want to uh, put the iron against the metal and then melt the metal to the metal. In other words, you don't want the the solder just hitting the iron. You want the the metal so hot that it's melting on the metal instead of the iron. But anyway, I've got that tin. Okay, now the next step, which, FYI, uh, just a good tip, go ahead and put your shrink wrap, which uh, I have different colors and styles. I ran out of black, so I'm going to use this yellow green for uh, for the black side, and then obviously red for the positive side. But go ahead and cut about a, I'd say about a half inch of each of these off of the length that I have. They come in about 12 inch length. And go ahead and slide those on the battery before you start this project because I don't know how many times I've soldered a battery on and then realized that I forgot to put the shrink tubing on there. And I then I'm having to go through the whole process of unsoldering it to, to re-solder it again just because I forgot the shrink wrap. But uh, anyway, so now I've got the shrink wrap on. Now my next trick is going to be is to See if I can do this without getting my fingers in the camera. I don't know if I can or not. Um, basically, the okay. Now for this next process, to go ahead and solder that battery wire lead up, which is right there, to my connection. I use uh, some just some uh, needle nose pliers because that wire is going to get hot, and you need to hold it on there while you uh, while you get it to uh, to solder under that connection. Uh, what do I do with my solder now? I'm going to go ahead and re-tin this a little bit. I don't know if I got a tin good enough. So now I got the wire tinned. This is really hard to try to be out of frame or get it in frame. Hopefully you can see this. Now as you can see and I know once I see it flow From the connector to the, if you notice the solder actually flowed off of that onto the connector, which is what you want, and it should be a good shiny connection. Shoot, I didn't hit it straight. Let me readjust it. Now I'm having a. This is a really, really heavy wire. It's almost too much for my station. Yeah, I think I got her there. And I always, I always double check them to make sure that, uh, that I got a, a good solder joint, which for me, I just take it off of here and I'll pull on it, tug on it real good, make sure that uh, I definitely uh, inspect it. Make sure that it looks good and soldered, which this one does. So uh, hold on a second. Okay, now that I've got my solder connection done, as you can see, um, I'm trying to get a good close-up of that. You can see that I've got real good flow between the connector and the wire, and uh, I'll even—I mean, I pull on it and twist on it, to make sure. But you know, like I said, this is a really heavy gauge. But next thing I'll do is I'll take and I'll slide my shrink wrap over it, as so. You can see this is tough. 
anyway there there's the shrink wrap but like I said I use yellow and green for that and then I'll use my hot air gun to uh, shrink that down which if you don't have a fancy hot air gun like I've got you can use a lighter matches uh, it just needs heat if you use lighter they'll be real careful not to uh, get it too hot and melt it anyway there's one connector and also I don't know if I mentioned earlier but these are polarity uh, in other words one has to be specifically positive and negative and uh, on these connectors it's actually marked and uh, the flat one is the negative and obviously the positive is going to be the one I haven't done yet but uh, do always make sure to check the polarity because you sure don't want to wire up a battery backwards uh, you could blow out an ASC or uh, got you know burn up a receiver uh, a lot of different possibilities there if you hooked up the, the wires back and backwards but uh, yeah definitely make sure your polarity is correct okay now on to the next connection another tip here is I don't know if you yeah you can see that that's a uh, actually that's some insulation that I'd cut off of uh, one of the wires but what I'll do with it is I will put it on the Dean's connector I will put it on this side here because I have two open connectors let's see get it hooked on here like that and what that does is because I'm going to put it back in my clamp and it's metal and I've already got the ground solder to this I don't want these two to touch or it would cause a short so I just put that under as extra protection so that when I hook this clamp up that I don't accidentally short the two while I'm trying to solder this connection on uh, just a little a little tip there that I, I found that you know that works perfect just to cover that just to protect it okay now we'll go through the process of uh, obtaining this one just the way we did the other one Okay, uh, now we're going to take the tin. Okay, now I've got my solder and my solder iron here. And uh, like I said, go metal first and then solder. And see how that flowed right on there? And see how that nice and shiny is prepped, it's ready to go for it. And then you do the same on the connector side. I'm not going to try and get it in frame. But it's the same basic thing. You want to get the metal hot enough to melt the solder into it. and and on the wire you want to wick it in there a little bit um, so you know that you surely you got full the, the whole wire tinned. If you don't get the whole wire tinned it won't transfer the heat good to the connector. Okay I've got it tinned now. And then the next process will be is to get my positive wire. Sorry I know this is in the frame. Maybe I can take it out of frame later but there we go. And then we want to take this and just lay it on there and get that treat heat transfer emit to the connector. See I just saw how it completely melted it which means I got full transfer. Hold it in place till it cools down and there you go. There's your second connector and let me double check it. I'll, obviously it's hot I'll let it set for just a second. And then again I just I, I slide my insulation over onto the terminal like that to cover my my solder joint and then I again will uh, hit it with uh, my hot air gun just take this and as you can see once it's shrunk I, I stop you don't want to melt it too much but you can tell when it's shrunk down to the wire there you go as you can see there and right there I have shown you the uh, go ahead and take my other half of the plug off of here now. See now I know that I didn't disform it or anything with the heat. See it plugs in nice and nice and solid like it should. And uh, now we have a now we have a battery with a, a Dean's connector on it which fits all my charging equipment and everything else. I wish I'd had some black heat shrink that yellow and green looks kind of funny on there but the main point is is just to protect the connections. Uh, obviously I could pull and uh, you really want to make sure those are soldered good and and I did, of course. Uh, part of that is if you watch the flow on the solder, like I was showing you, you know that you know the that it flowed through the connector and the wire, and held in place, and and you have a good connection. But that's really all there is to putting a, a Dean's connector connection connector, <laughs> Dean's connector onto a uh, onto a lipo battery. Uh, obviously, it's the same process for the male side, which this is a male side of a Dean's connector with it has the two on the back. You tin them. You wire, uh, put heat shrink on the wire, and then solder it to the connector and, and seal it. 
Uh, the equipment I'm using is a, uh, it's a soldering station right here. Um, actually, it's a hot air and a soldering station. And uh, because that wire gauge was so thick, I, I was doing between 450 and 500 on the on the temperature. And that's really, if you were doing component soldering, you would not, you'd be in the 300 to 350 range. But uh, due to the fact that that gauge, that wire, and this iron is pretty small, I had to had to crank her up there but as you saw it did flow good and that's the main thing when you're doing solder connections is you want to make sure and uh, have good flow of your solder and, uh, and and a shiny connection tells you that uh, that you, you don't have what they call a cold connection so hopefully this has helped somebody out there uh, I know uh, I just had to learn on my own and thought maybe I'd just do a little video on how to do this uh, upcoming will be obviously my my Piper Cub that, uh, that Santa brought me uh, it's a carbon Z Cub I think it's like 84 inch wingspan I'm pretty excited to get it up and going I'm working on it today and decided to go ahead and uh, and do a uh, little video on the Dean's connector don't forget to subscribe this is the electron man